Right, okay, thanks for joining the Average Golfer. I'm down here at 4 Golf Chester and I've asked for the assistance and help of the Average Golf Pro, Lewis Johnson. So, Lewis, now one of Lewis's many roles, because he's multi-talented, is that he's an elite custom fitter down here at 4 Golf. I like that word, elite. You're all right with that? I'm happy with that, yeah. And we're going to, I need your advice and help, because the idea behind this is, right, so we've got TS1, TS2, 3 and 4. There's been a lot of maybe negativity towards the fact that they've brought out TS1 and 4 a lot later on than uh, when TS2 and 3 grew. I don't really want to get involved in that. You can all have your opinions on it by all means in the comments down below. But what I'm more interested in, now they are on the shelf, is what are the differences and how it might affect or suit you or not suit you uh, as to your particular game. So that's, so, the, that's the most important thing, isn't it? You know, let's, let's be honest, that's... How, it's how it affects you, it's not what your opinion is, it's what, how it performs. Well, We're ultimately, on. I suppose there might be a few people who are a little cheesed off if they've got TS2 and 3 and they feel that 1 and 4 they might benefit. Yeah, We're going to find that out if it is the case, first of all. So with the new drivers, how would you describe TS1? So TS1, I, I think, is, is they've, they've done something that they've never done before, Titleist. Uh, they've made a, a lightweight, so the grip is lighter, the shafts are lighter that come as standard. They're like 45 So it's a 45 on. gram in a speeder, 45 in the a Fubuki, um, and basically they're the standard shafts that come uh, as the options. Um, but also what, what, what I like is it's 40 gram for senior flex, um, or A flex as they call it, uh, and stiff. So you and can stiff. get a four, 40 gram stiff shaft, um, and also in the head, it's really important for the first time ever they've done a, you know, the only 12 and a half degree head in this range. So you could get the more loft options. It's still got the sort of A to D, one to four, sure fit. Um, but it's slightly towed in as well. So it's, it's something it, they've never done. And um, it's weight at the back, all the way to yeah, the back. Yeah, so back CG, you know, the weight is similar to the, it's, it's actually a lighter club head as well. So lighter grip, lighter shaft, lighter club head, all about light and anti-right. Okay, and so, so for me, perhaps the driver out the four that you would think is aimed at the broader audience in terms of the average golfer. Absolutely, TS1, yeah. At least on the shelf. Yeah. And I was that really way. intrigued at how this, because this is probably something Titleist have never done before. Okay, go to the other end, first of all, TS4, which is another one of the new ones that's come in. So this is weight now shifted way forward. Yeah. Smaller head size. Smaller head size, uh, 430, where does everything else in the range is 460. Um, CG further forward, low spin, low launch. Um, Slightly more open again, not Yeah, this, uh, yeah, sort of more the players club. Um, so, you know, it would compete with your LS Tech Ping and your M5 Tour and, and your Sub Zero Callaway. Um, but nice, you know, nice looking club. Um, but, again, but more of really, a player's profile, more aimed at the, as I said, the better player. Yeah, so where TS1 goes at this end. TS4 would go at that end, um, but but yeah, it's it's really you know the TS3 was the lowest spinning of TS2, TS3, and Let, then they've put it at, at that end. Right, let's not jump into two and three first of all, because what I'm going to do is stop there, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get fitted for both one and four, and I'm going to start hitting some balls. We'll get some numbers together, and we'll have a little look at those first of all, and then we're going to do exactly the same. We'll look at two and three, and then we'll see just how they all fit together, and if there are any glaring differences. Or in fact, are they all just exactly the same as long as you get fitted correctly? We'll find out. So the first bit, I'll start hitting some balls and we'll start collecting some data. Right, okay, so as Lewis explained, two of the standard shafts are very much lightweight. I've got this speeder shaft in what weight? Uh, it's 40 gram, that one. So it's 40 gram, so really lightweight. You can tell almost straight away in terms of uh, a lighter head as well in TS1. Lewis explained to me even a lighter grip. So this club has got virtually... If you compare it to most drivers that you're putting down, you notice straight away, it is very, very lightweight indeed. So let's hit a few balls with this and get some numbers. Well, before Lewis talks, that's absolutely gone into orbit and that, I would imagine that's spinning. Uh, yes, <laughs> well, you know, just having a look at how, you know, how, in terms of look and feel, Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not noticing the overly sort of. It's it's got offset. There's no. It's definitely closed. So it's yeah. It's it's closed. It's it's definitely an anti right club, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So that one's spinning at over four thousand. Yeah, which... you could you could see that straight away. Yeah. Same again. It's the immediate thing is the ball flight is a very. I mean, like we're expecting. Weights far back. The ball is. In, in terms of ball flight, it's way too high.
But I've got to say, for me, the other thing is, I don't like this lightness of... Well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, one thing that we, we sort of cover in the fitting is lightweight doesn't always mean quicker, doesn't always mean better. No. Your club head speed there, and we do a lot of testing, so we know we've got a good ballpark. Your swing speed number is actually down with, yeah. with that club, even though the overall weight is, you know, it's the lightest club you've probably drive, you've tried in, in a long time. So Ooh. it doesn't always necessarily mean better. No. And again, spin rate massively high, distance way down. The big thing for me as well is I've got no idea where that club head is. I just can't feel it on the end of the shaft, to be quite honest with you. Right. So let's have a change the shaft. We're going to swap the shaft, yeah. It's different. I mean, immediately there's just a... Uh, Okay, so we've gone to 10th side blue, 55, which is something that I use quite often um, in a lot of the drivers. So it's something that I would definitely go towards. And straight away from the first ball. Yeah, and second ball. It's a lot more solid strike. The whole feel of the club changes for me. It's still very much high launching, and I would guess high, high spinning. Yeah, very much high launch. It's it, I, I've actually put it in, so it's a heavier shaft. Yeah. So changed it, but you know it's still like, obviously lightweight head. But your swing speed has actually gone up. So yeah. like what we're talking about, it's not it's not what it says on paper. Not always is what happens. The interesting thing for me already, just into TS1, and we're going to shift this on a bit in terms of the pace of the video. I'm already can tell that the big deal for me is just the importance again of custom fit just in one club head straight away the difference is huge right on to ts4 now and uh, i'll see what shaft we end up with and we'll get some data on ts4 right okay so that's data gathered on ts1 and ts4 huge difference with shaft and in the end it was tensile blue 55 gram that i put in both of these heads now data in front of you now and we'll do some i'll do my analysis and ask you the questions so we ended up with similar club head speed in the end uh, again there'll be variables from my swing but similar club head speed um, ball speed was two mile an hour faster uh, with the TS1 which was yeah. interesting the spin number was a thousand revs higher which we'd have expected yeah. carry almost identical um, peak height was quite different again the yeah. TS1 lot, was obviously a lot higher a lot, lot higher. higher and overall distance um, and I think an easy evaluation was because we lost 10 yards overall, why? Spin rate. Yeah. Spin rate, you know, launch too high. Actually, sort of, you could almost see the old, the old sort of off light started low. Ballooning. So the launch angle was lower, but yeah. it, it real ballooned. And again, I think one thing to note was with the TS1, it's sort of the, the, the anti-right sort of close kind of face with it. Um, you can see from the dispersion there, yeah. you really struggled with the left with it. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, not something that... No, again, it's not. I mean, the interesting bit for me was that um, the question it raises for me, and that's why I'm interested in this particular video, is that in theory, in my head now, I'm thinking, well, at TS2 or TS3, if we can get the same ball speeds off one of those two, but drop the spin number, which I can't yeah. do on TS1, I should get an optimal situation. Yeah, is that right? You try and get the spin from one, yeah, and the ball speed from another, yeah, and I think we've cracked it. So let's see if that's the case. So next up, let's have a look at TS2 and TS3 and see what numbers I get. Right, so once again, we're gonna go with the same, exactly the same shaft. Uh, this is TS2, so it's still got weight uh, back. Uh, it's a slightly, again, towed in, uh, as Louis would call it. Um, yeah, so I've set that at C3. Yeah. Um, so it plays upright, it's 0.75 up in the loft. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, Louie. That's a powerful flight, that one, isn't it? It's one shot in, so let's not get too excited. But straight away, that was um, by far the best ball of it uh, out of all the drivers we've tried so far. But the, the big thing for me was ball flight. Um, it, a penetrating ball flight, that thing was moving forward, and I would imagine decent number. Yes, we've gone 2 7 spin. Um, two four three carry yeah and then two six seven point eight total which are you yeah. know good numbers slightly higher launch in that one but again it's a big carry it's a the, the thing for me straight away coming off of this club face is just a lot more powerful ball flight and what I couldn't achieve that the sort of floaty ball flight that I was getting with the uh, TS1 
sort of a little bit low in the um, in, in the TS4, there's already a happy medium. Beautiful, mate. Yeah, um, two four six carry, two six spin, two seventy total. That's you know, and that would probably not you, you know you, you could say that it did go that a bit did higher, float a little bit higher. But no, that was but in terms good. of them kind of numbers, anybody who watches the channel will pretty much know that's on my optimum. I don't do any better than that. Uh, anything around that two fifty carry and in around 270 overall. That's as good as I've got. Anyway, I'll hit just a couple more with this. I don't think um, we need too many more because that's a huge difference. And then I need to do exactly the same with TS3. See what impact that has, and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss this whole one to four thing and see where, it's, uh, see where it sits for me at least anyway. That's a huge difference. I've just buttoned three of them, but I mean, it's just the whole thing changes completely. The whole, we're three drivers in, and that's a, just changed completely. That, that is a, I see, you know, we talk about custom fit all the time, and uh, I don't think you can ever categorize a club as suitable for somebody. I think you've just got to get in there, and this, for me, is a real eye-opener. Okay, isn't it? It, it is, is massive. massive. Let's, Let's do number three, TS3, three, see what it does. Okay, so numbers got now with TS2 and TS3. And very briefly, let's go through them before we go any further. So club head speed remain consistent for all four drivers in and around 96 to 97 mile an hour. Uh, we got ball speeds up on both of these with 149.2 on that TS2. 2.5 spin on the TS2 again, which was lower than TS3, which slightly surprised me. Launch angle similar. Peak height though was a better ball flight. Yeah, well. and I think j just the way you're hitting it on the club face, you're dispersing in terms of you know, where the ball finished, but you know, sort of across the club face as well. Strike pattern was better with TS2. Definitely a more suited driver to you. Yeah, the numbers were. Well, from start to finish, if we look at 243 carry, which was the longest carry I achieved on average, and almost 270 in terms of overall distance. And you couple that with the dispersion, and the TS2 stuck out an absolute mile. So yeah. in, in, in brief, like I said, if we did a summary, you can, I think you, it's fairly uh, obvious, but we'll, uh, we'll give our own a sort of assessment of it. For me, I think TS1, is certainly going to appeal to a lot of players, but I don't think, even though I haven't got a fast club head speed or swing speed, I think it's maybe aimed at slightly slower. Yeah, yeah, me. I'm really looking forward to sort of fitting that for, for you know, your day to day fitting in here. I think it, it's a club that cyclists have never really offered before. Um, anti right, you know, close club face, light club head, light shafts, light higher grip. launch again, still. Yeah, higher launch, higher spin. That you know, it. Gonna I'm looking. To, it's going to suit a lot of people. It's going to basically give Titleist another avenue, yeah. um, where people potentially have gone into another brand because they offer that type of model. So I'm really looking forward to that TS4. Not too sure where that. You know, I, I, on paper, yeah. It, you know, CG forwards, low spin, I low launch. I mean, I don't get TS4 at all. I'm not really sure of its purpose because I think what it does in terms of the difference between that and TS3, in theory. Um, I don't really understand, like I said, what, what, how it would differ. Yeah. So that one for me I think is a, a bit of a... A correctly fitted TS3 gives you the option of, the you know, you can put the added weight in the back. Yeah. It, it, you know, you, you, can, you can move around with the weight, so you can move the CG further forward, which, you know, um, you get the bigger club head in the TS3. Mm. Um, I'm it's a difficult sure one for me, that. I don't, I, don't, I don't see how that one fits. TS1, yes, I get, will suit people however on this occasion for me from one through to four ts2 stood out a mile and a bigger message really is again once again about custom fit i could have walked in here with any sort of preconceptions about what i might have wanted from one to four but the reality was having done the test having got custom fit when i found the right shaft it was clear that ts2 stood out an absolute mile for me anyway the video started off it was going to be a review of ts1 and ts4 and it opened my eyes to thinking, hang on, we need to broaden this out a little bit here. Because yeah. neither were suited to me. No. And uh, it showed that... It really it, it, it changed the course of what, oh, we, what we were doing. It wasn't, wasn't the plan for the day. Yeah. But anyway, I hope it made sense. Thanks to Lewis to getting involved. I think we'll do a lot more of this style of video going forward. So I hope you enjoyed his involvement. As ever, comments down below. Love your input. Have you tried either of the new drivers, or any of the drivers, in fact, from this Titleist range? And what are your thoughts on them adding TS1 and TS4 in six months after they launched TS2 and 3 or whatever it was? As ever, thank you for watching and uh, we will see you very soon.